And here we go again. Welcome back, everybody. I am so glad to have you join us again. And uh, this is day 187 of our daily Bible reading. And I hope you're as excited as I am to read the Word of God. And this time we're going to be covering 2 Kings chapter 14, and then jump over to 2 Chronicles chapter 25 for a few more details that we don't get in chapter 14. So here we are. If you are ready to begin, let's start. Yudas King Amasiah, chapter 14. In the second year of Israel's king Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, Amaziah, son of Jehoash, became king of Judah. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadan. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the Lord's sight, but not like his ancestor David. He did everything his father Joash had done. Yet the high places were not taken away, and the people continued sacrificing and burning incense on the high places. As soon as the kingdom was firmly in his grasp, Amaziah killed his servants who had killed his father, the king. However, he did not put the children of the killers to death, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, where the Lord commanded, Fathers are not to be put to death because of children and children are not to be put to death because of fathers. Instead, each one will be put to death for his own sin. Amaziah killed 10,000 Edomites in Salt Valley. He took Selah in battle and called it Yoktiel, which is still its name today. Amaziah then sent messengers to Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, king of Israel and challenged him, Come, let's meet face to face. King Jehoash of Israel sent word to King Amaziah of Judah, saying, The thistle in Lebanon once sent a message to the cedar in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son as a wife. Then a wild animal in Lebanon passed by and trampled the thistle. You have indeed defeated Edom, and you have become overconfident. Enjoy your glory and stay at home. Why should you stir up such trouble that you fall, you and Judah with you? But Amaziah would not listen, so King Jehoash of Israel advanced. He and King Amaziah of Judah met face to face at Bet Shemesh, that belonged to Judah. Judah was routed before Israel, and each man fled to his own tent. King Jehoash of Israel captured Judah's king Amaziah, son of Jehoash, son of Ahaziah, son of Ahaziah, at Bet Shemesh. Then Jehoash went to Jerusalem and broke down two hundred yards of Jerusalem's wall, from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate. He took all the gold and silver, all the articles found in the Lord's temple and in the treasuries of the king's palace, and some hostages. Then he returned to Shamron, Samaria. Jehoash's death. The rest of the events of Jehoash's reign, along with his accomplishments, his might, and how he waged war against King Amaziah of Judah, are written in the historical record of Israel's kings. Jehoash rested with his ancestors, and he was buried in Shamron with the kings of Israel. His son Jeroboam became king in his place. Amaziah's death. Judah's king Amaziah, son of Jehoash, lived fifteen years after the death of Israel's king Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz. The rest of the events of Amaziah's reign are written in the historical record of Judah's kings. A conspiracy was formed against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. However, men were sent after him to Lachish, and they put him to death there. They carried him back on horses, and he was buried in Jerusalem with his ancestors in the city of David. Then all the people of Judah took Azariah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king in the place of his father, Amaziah. After Amaziah the king rested with his ancestors, 
Azariah rebuilt Elat and restored it to Judah, Israel's king Jeroboam. In the fifteenth year of Judah's king Amaziah, son of Joash, Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, became king of Israel in Shamron, and he reigned forty-one years. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He did not turn away from all the sins Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had caused Israel to commit. He restored Israel's border from Lebohamat as far as the Sea of the Arabah, according to the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, had spoken through his servant, the prophet Yonah, son of Amittai, from Gat Hefer. From the Lord, for the Lord saw that the affliction of Israel was very bitter for both slaves and free people. There was no one to help Israel. The Lord had not said he would blot out the name of Israel under heaven. So he delivered them by the hand of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash. The rest of the events of Jeroboam's reign, along with all his accomplishments, the power he had to wage war, and how he recovered for Israel, Damascus, and Hamat, which had belonged to Judah, are written in the historical record of Israel's kings. Jeroboam rested with his ancestors, the kings of Israel. His son Zechariah became king in his place. And now let's jump over to Second Chronicles 25, and we'll fill in some details that we didn't have before. Judah's king Amaziah, chapter 25. Amaziah became king when he was 25 years old, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Yehoadan. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the Lord's sight, but not wholeheartedly. As soon as the kingdom was firmly in his grasp, he executed his servants who had killed his father, the king. However, he did not put their children to death, because, as it is written in the law in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, Fathers are not to die because of children, and children are not to die because of fathers, but each one will die for his own sin. Amaziah's Campaign Against Edom Then Amaziah gathered Judah and assembled them according to ancestral families, according to commanders of thousands, and according to commanders of hundreds. He numbered those twenty years old or more for all Judah and Benjamin. He found there to be three hundred thousand fit young men who could serve in the army, bearing spear and shield. Then for seven thousand five hundred pounds of silver, he hired one hundred thousand valiant warriors from Israel. However, a man of God came to him and said, King, do not let Israel's army go with you, for the Lord is not with Israel, all the Ephraimites. But if you go with them, do it. Be strong for battle, but God will make you stumble before the enemy, for God has the power to help or to make one stumble. Then Amaziah said to the man of God, what should I do about the 7,500 pounds of silver I gave to Israel's division? The man of God replied, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. So Amaziah released the division that came to him from Ephraim to go home. But they got very angry with Utah and returned home in a fierce rage. Amaziah strengthened his position and led his people to the Salt Valley. He struck down 10,000 Seirites and the Judahites, captured 10,000 alive. They took them to the top of a cliff where they threw them off, and all of them were dashed to pieces. As for the men of the division that Amaziah sent back, so they would not go with him into battle, they raided the cities of Judah from Shamron to Beit Horon, struck down 3,000 of their people, and took a great deal of plunder. After Amaziah came from the, from the attack on the Edomites, he brought the gods of the Seirites and set them up as his gods. 
he worshiped before them and burned incense to them. So the Lord's anger was against Amaziah, and he sent a prophet to him who said, Why have you sought a people's gods that could not rescue their own people from you? While he was still speaking to him, the king asked, Have we made you the king's counselor? Stop! Why should you lose your life? So the prophet stopped, but he said, I know that God intends to destroy you, because you have done this and have not listened to my advice. Amaziah's war with Israel's king Yehoash. King Amaziah of Judah took counsel and sent word to Yehoash, son of Yehoahaz, son of Yehu, king of Israel, and challenged him, Come, let's meet face to face. King Yehoash of Israel sent word to King Amaziah of Judah, saying, The thistle in Lebanon sent a message to the cedar in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son as a wife. Then a wild animal in Lebanon passed by and trampled the thistle. You have said, Look, I have defeated Edom and have become overconfident, that you will get glory. Now stay at home. Why stir up such trouble so that you fall and you die with you? But Amasiah would not listen, for this turn of events was from God, in order to hand them over to their enemies because they went after the gods of Edom. So King Yehoash of Israel advanced. He and King Amasiah of Judah met face to face at Beit Shemesh, that belonged to Judah. Judah was routed before Israel, and each man fled to his own tent. King Yehoash of Israel captured Judah's king Amaziah, son of Yehoash, son of Yehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh. Then Yehoash took him to Jerusalem and broke down 200 yards of Jerusalem's wall from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate. He took all the gold, silver, all the utensils that were found with Obed-Edom in God's temple, the treasures of the king's palace, and the hostages. Then he returned to Shamron. Amasiah's death. Judah's king Amasiah, son of Yehoash, lived fifteen years after the death of Israel's king Yehoash, son of Yehoahaz. The rest of the events of Amasiah's reign, from beginning to end, are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. From the time Amasiah turned from following the Lord, a conspiracy was formed against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. However, men were sent after him to Lachish, and they put him to death there. They carried him back on horses and buried him with his ancestors in the city of Judah. May the Lord bless the reading and study of his word.